YouTube, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. And today we are taking a look at the New Balance Beacon V3. And real quick, I would love to thank Mr. Random for commenting this shoe review request down below. And I'd encourage you to comment a request as well. But without any further ado, let us get into my first impression review of the New Balance Beacon V3. The Beacon V3 is a comfortable running shoe that offers plenty of soft cushioning while making picking up the pace feel pretty easy. It features strategically placed rubber pods for extra durability, making these shoes ideal for almost any type of run. And the engineered upper mesh on top provides a barely there feel. So off the bat, I really like what New Balance is trying to get at with this shoe. It really wants to be a lightweight trainer that is a do it most shoe, not a do it all shoe, but a do it most shoe. That means you can do a lot of different things with it on the spectrum of paces and running. All right, so let's roll into the specs, starting with the stack height. The Beacon V3 is sitting at 26 millimeters in the heel and 20 millimeters in the forefoot for a drop of six millimeters, which is pretty standard for a daily trainer, especially coming from New Balance. I liked that a lot. I thought it was pretty pretty standard, pretty solid. You're not gonna get a ton of issues with that. And you don't have to think about it too much if you're coming from a 10 millimeter drop shoe, just cause it's not that extreme. So moving on to the weight of the shoe. I'm getting conflicting reports about the weight of this shoe. So I'm gonna use what Running Warehouse has down on their description. And they have the shoe at 7.8 ounces in a men's size 9 and 7.1 ounces in a woman's size 8. That feels pretty realistic to me. Um, I'm an 11 and a half, so I know this shoe's a little heavier than that, but it felt really light. And I'm gonna give a lot of credit to what they have in the midsole and the outsole for that, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But first impression is I'm very impressed with the weight of the shoe. I heard it got a little lighter from its past models, so that's a step in the right direction. Shout out to New Balance for that. So the fit, pretty comfortable in the heel and the midfoot area. I personally had a little bit issue with an extra volume and wideness in the toe box area, and it led to a little bit of scrunching here when I cinched the laces down. For me, that's because I have a narrow foot. I'm gonna say this is a pretty good shoe if, you, if your foot runs wider. So take that into account when you're getting this. It hasn't really gotten in my way, but it's something I noticed and something that tends to give me blisters when there's bunching up here on the top of my toes. So for me, that was a little bit annoying, but overall, I was really impressed with the fit across the heel and the midfoot. The tongue actually is not gusseted at all. It's not even attached. It's only attached to the, to the front of the toe box area. Gusseted tongues are kind of the way people are going now. So I'm gonna be into seeing what they do with the next version of this one. But for now, I thought it was pretty comfortable and you don't have a lot of issues with the tongue sliding around on either side of your foot. The cinch is pretty solid, and I was pleasantly surprised with the heel collar fit. I thought it was gonna be a little bit loosey-goosey, but you know what? This was pretty nice. There's a little bit of padding. There's just enough padding inside of the heel area to lock your foot down and maintain a comfortable but lightweight feel. And with that, we're gonna look at some of the specs on the upper. So New Balance is starting off with an engineered mesh upper to provide what they say a breathable, lightweight, and secure fit. I'm gonna give them two out of three on that. It's very lightweight and the secure fit is definitely there. But breathability, I was having some issues with that. It's not that the shoe isn't breathable, it's that there's just so many other models out there that feel like they're much more breathable. For something that's such a thin upper, you can kind of just see, you can see through the shoe, but I wasn't getting a ton of breathability out of it. Definitely something I noticed when you look at something that you'd expect to be so breathable and it wasn't. Not a deal breaker for me and maybe as I get more miles on it, we'll see how that develops. But for now, something to think about. And I covered this a little bit earlier when I talked about fit, but New Balance is implementing what they call an ultra heel with a lip on the top. And this is something that a lot of companies are doing. You see with like Nike and Hoka and New Balance, they're all implementing the lip to reduce heel irritation and like Achilles rubbing. And you know what? It worked. This was nice to have. It's definitely a very loose heel collar. I usually prefer a little rigid heel collar, but it didn't get in my way and it wasn't that bad and it definitely subtracts the weight. I think they nailed it with that. So big shout out to New Balance on this 
upper. So moving on to the midsole. It's pretty simple here. They're just implementing a full run of their Fresh Foam X material, which is an updated version of their traditional Fresh Foam. I've been someone who's pretty skeptical of Fresh Foam in the past. I've noticed that it wears down a lot quicker than other midsole foams, but it does provide a nice bounce and snap when it's working. So I have yet to see what the X does in the long run, but for now, I'm gonna say definitely a good combination of soft but responsive, leaning towards responsive. If you like a nice plush shoe, this isn't the one for you, even though it kind of looks plush, it's a little deceptive. It's definitely like, pretty firm midsole. If you're looking for something that offers enough cushion to protect your legs and feet, but also is snappy and responsive enough to encourage a forward lean into a run on kind of an easier paced workout or daily training run, this is going to be a good one for you. I found it really helped me lean into my stride and it definitely propulsed me forward without any kind of extra frills added to the shoe, which is nice. And this midsole's lightweight, so that's all I'm gonna say about that. I was pretty happy with this overall. Moving on to the outsole. As you can see, it's very simple and minimalistic. New Balance has placed two pods on the lateral side of the heel and three pods on the medial side of the forefoot. These are places where they've found that there is the most wear patterns on their foam and the rest is just exposed fresh foam X. That will very well, I'm sure, affect the durability of the shoe. I'm looking at the shoe as more of a lightweight trainer and I don't expect it to get a thousand miles on it. While it will affect the durability, I'm not too concerned about that. And that's about all there is for the outsole. So now we're going to move into my positives and drawbacks of the shoe. Positive is that this shoe is versatile. A great blend of responsive and soft cushioning, and I think it'll allow you to get a lot out of it for what it's offering. Moving on to the drawback of my shoe, I mentioned this earlier and it's a me thing, may not be a you thing, but as someone with a narrow foot, I did get a lot of bunching here in the forefoot area. If you have a high volume foot, this may be a positive for you. So would highly recommend this shoe if you have a wide foot. I have a pretty low volume, narrow foot. There was a fair amount of swimming and bunching in the forefoot, but again, the lockdown was good in the midfoot and heel area. And moving on to that durability prediction I was talking about, I'm gonna say this shoe is gonna get you a very quality 400 miles, maybe 500 if you're a super efficient runner. But if you guys have ran more in this, please comment down below. I'd love to hear what your experience has been with this shoe. Let's get into what I think this shoe will be best for. This shoe is gonna be great for daily training, easy runs, kind of like medium long runs, I think, if you guys do that. And then also any sort of workout when you're working the pace down through like marathon pace or tempo pace work. I think this is gonna get you that if you need it. Not much faster than that, but the lockdown is great and the midsole snap is lightweight and solid. So very versatile and very happy with that. So moving on to my price of the shoe at $120, that's a pretty damn fair price. You're getting exactly what they're offering on the shoe, and that is a versatile, lightweight, and snappy daily trainer that's gonna protect your feet and legs just enough. The durability is a bit of a concern, but that's really not what it's promising, so I'm not gonna grade it too hard on that. And actually, real quick, I'm gonna get into a quick comparison of this shoe, and that is gonna be the Nike Pegasus 37, because they're both in kind of that lightweight, do it most daily training option. And while I think the Pegasus is gonna get you more miles, if you had to ask me right now, which shoe would I buy again? It's definitely gonna be the Beacon V3. And that's because it really was a much more enjoyable ride for me personally. I thought the snappiness of the cushion was nice. You're not gonna get quite as much durability out of this Beacon, but I think you're gonna get a more enjoyable ride out of this with the miles you're putting onto it. The Pegasus 37 did not really make it to 50 miles. I got a bunch of other shoes that I'd rather wear, including this Beacon V3. So didn't get my full review on this one, but I kind of wanted to close the book on that. It's not a bad shoe, but it's just not something that I was really digging of all the shoe options out there that I can pick from. The Beacon V3, is a really solid, snappy daily training option. I am really looking forward to getting this one to 50 miles and sharing my scored full review with you guys. So stay tuned for that, and I cannot wait to get more miles on the New Balance Beacon V3.
three. You guys have been awesome today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Just know, I love you all. I really think we're building an awesome community here and I can't wait to bring even more shoe reviews and other workout content on this channel. With that, I'm gonna leave it there today. And until next time, y'all know the drill. Stay healthy, stay chill. Cheers, friends. Oh,